All right, everyone, thank you for joining. Um, again, these workouts really motivate me, and it's really to give you guys some ideas, um, also to bring you guys inside my brain in terms of program design and, and client training and so forth, but also um, just kind of doing what I know works and what I know you know, is beneficial in regards to the literature and general recommendations. So first off, I'm gonna warm up my rotator cuff. I'll try and show as many alternatives as possible because uh, I know equipment is limited during this time. And then um, I'm gonna do my standard lower body opener and then we're just gonna get going. Uh, again, it's gonna be kind of a total body circuit and then I have this chair here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go ahead and get started. So the first thing is I'm gonna have this band here. I'm just gonna do rotator cuff warm up. One of the uh, modifications or alternatives is you could simply just do shoulder circles like this. 10 this way, 10 that way. And you could do it from kind of like a different positions in terms of the arc. So I'm just gonna do about 15. So all I'm doing, good. All I'm doing is just doing a 15 and I'm making sure that I'm keeping my elbow at a 90 degree angle and making sure that the, uh, the fist touches the belly to get full range of motion to turn out. And I'm just doing this to warm up my rotator cuff so that way it's going to be primed to uh, stabilize during standard uh, exercise, upper body exercises. So that's it for that. Now I'm going to do my lower body opener. This is just a can opener. Just do about four one way, four the other. And what I'm going to do is, next I'm going to do knee opener. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now ankle opener. One, two, three, four, five. Big circles. This is good for mobility. And uh, I think it just kind of covers a lot of corners. And uh, so I like to do these exercises, these little warm-ups. I even do them whenever I'm just generally feeling tight. I'll do these, whether I'm tight in the hips or wherever the case may be. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to start with a low amount of reps, then I'm going to build it up. So it's going to be a kind of a built-in warm-up because uh, I just want to kind of get going. So it's going to be dumbbell thrusters, jump squats, uh, squat burpee, which is a half burpee. And you're going to be, I'll, I'll explain it as I do it. And then, oh yeah, and then push-ups. I'm going to do 80 push-ups, so four sets of 20. And then I'm going to do the duffel bag row, and then I'm going to do a three-point dumbbell row. So, here we go. I'm going to start off with the dumbbell thruster. So this is 20 pounds. I'm just going to do five, just because I want to warm up. Okay, that's five. Now we've got our jump squats. I'm going to make sure you can land like a ninja, nice and quiet. Now watch how the pressure stays in the quads. Squat position. Stay in your squat position. Two more. So those three exercises are really getting the, the lower body going. Uh, I'm just going to come back to it. Now we're going to do six reps of each. <clears throat> first, first set was five. Now it's going to be six. Okay. Now we got six jump squats. So try and be smart and keep these as low impact as possible even though they are impact, but there's a correlation. Usually impact's gonna give you energy expenditure.
All right, let's come back. Now we're going to do seven. And I think it's important. It doesn't have to be about speed. Seven jump squats. Okay. Now I'm going to do those half burpees. And show to the side. So I'm trying to stay with my lower back straight and everything stacked. So that's seven. Tell you what, I'm just gonna go right into the weights now. So now I'm gonna do the push-ups. I'm gonna do 20. <clears throat> Good. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna just go right into the rows. So I'm gonna put 20 pounds in the duffel bag. <clears throat> okay, so I can't tell who's watching. I can see some people come in and go. That's fine. Come and go as you please. So it's just like a T row. Now I'm going to take one. We're going to go right into that three point row. So I'm trying to get both the top and bottom of the plate to touch chest and lower rib. Get a better squeeze in the, in the upper back that way. Okay, here's the other side. I don't even know how many did on the other side, but let's get to 15. I think that's what it did. Okay, that's good for that. Now we're gonna come back to the thrusters as well as the other two. I can already feel the metabolism going. A little bit of sweat. And heart rate's going, so that's good. Also, just take the accountability. So we're going to do eight. And if you notice, I try not to kill the reps. When I'm just trying to stay fit and healthy, I stack them together. So there's eight there, eight on the next, eight on the other. It's 24 total reps, but it doesn't feel like it because you're doing three different things. So the variety almost tricks your brain. That's how to make this kind of less cumbersome, less monotonous and a little more enjoyable, the variety. So now we're gonna do the jump squats. 
you don't have to do a jump squat. If, if one were to do this, you could simply just take a chair and you can literally go like this. And you can even get a little arm pump, almost like you're skiing. And the reason why the chair is good is not because for support. Yeah, that's one reason. The other reason is it makes you consistent with the range of motion. You know you're going to hit the same range of motion each rep because this is an, a definite a definite end point. Okay. So I want to do with eight half workings. Eight. All right. We're going to come back to the push ups. sets of 20. There was a study that just came out not long ago that said that unfortunately it was just done on men. I think it was firefighters. Um, if you could do more than 10 push-ups, it's good for general cardiovascular health and mortality. Doing less than 10 was found to be significantly associated with higher risk of heart disease and other other uh, you know diseases but you know I think if you could do like 30, I forget what it was, but doing more than 10. So uh, I think the last time I checked, I did like 40 to 50. So that's important, you know? You have those standards and uh, you have concrete, concrete um, evidence-based standards. And I think that's where the true accountability comes from. All right, so now I'm gonna do those duffel bag rows again. Just choke up. Fifteen there. Now we're going to do the three point row. So I'm going slow now because I want to take advantage because I'm feeling the sweat coming and I feel a good metabolic response coming so take advantage of it. You get a great blood pressure lowering response from doing exercise. It's a good thing. I'm sure we probably need that during the stress that we, well, the obvious stress that we're experiencing. So the reason why I'm doing it this way is because, um, I mean, hard to count and talk at the same time. Okay, whatever, I didn't get the right. This gives a little more back support. So you can keep your back flat. I don't have a bench. So this is the next best thing. So that's why I'm doing it that way. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do now is go straight back to those push-ups. And uh, I think I did three, I just started off five, six, seven, eight, wow, okay, I did four sets, wow. I did four sets of the trio. The trio was uh, dumbbell thrusters, squat jumps, and half burpee jumps. And the half burpee jump, I'm staying in a squatted position. So I'm overtaxing the lower body. Not because I'm thinking about making these muscles bigger, although that might happen too, but because it's gonna drive up the cardiovascular response. I'm kind of putting myself behind the eight ball right from the get-go, and that's gonna trickle up to here. So whenever I do curls, now the curls are gonna be 
amplified. They're gonna have more calorie burning potential because I'm dealing with a little bit of an epoch linger, or basically afterburn or a debt. So I'm incurring a debt in my lower body and that's gonna trickle through the rest of the body and it makes it a metabolic workout. Now I'm taking the best bang for the buck because I don't wanna overkill it. I'm doing just enough to get the candle lit. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to strike the match than it is to keep the flame going. Right now I'm just keeping the flame going. Now once that flame gets blown out, then I gotta strike again. That's just cut, that's kind of my minimalist approach to try and get the most out of the least. These push-ups are gonna be a little more challenging because of everything I've done leading up to this point. So it's not just seeing 20 push-ups, it's 20 push-ups under fatigue. So think about when you go to IMAX. You put the, I have actually, I haven't been, but when it's 3D, it amplifies a regular movie. This is what this is doing. 20. It's 60 now, that's good. I want to do 80 at least. At least 80. And I think once I finish this, I'm gonna do a little bit of cardio conditioning. I'm gonna do some shadow boxing. So, do some of that. I don't think I've seen videos of people doing that yet online, so maybe I'll be one of the, I'm sure there, there has been. I just haven't seen it. We got one more set of push-ups. So now I'm coming back to my three-point chair row. I'm gonna add a little twist to it. So now I'm gonna come this way, pendulum, half pendulum it out. Let's do the other side. 15. So I want to establish a strong base of support. I'm going to check the time in a second. Five more. minutes in okay that's good you guys can see here see that uh, I wasn't like that at the beginning now granted yeah it's outdoors but still the Sun's not blazing I just think it's a combination of one a good little scheme and two whoever's watching it keeps me accountable and it motivates me so we're gonna finish it out we got one more set of 20 one more set of rows and then I'm gonna do some, put the gloves on, and do some shadow boxing. And I'll talk through that as far as what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. up on you. Get the form right. We're gonna, we're gonna break it down. You got two more. No biggie. One, two. One, two. You know the tricky thing about that is as the number gets higher 
the fatigue becomes almost unpredictable. I would say it almost becomes, it's not even linear anymore. You can't even predict it. It'll just, like you can see the wall when a fatigue becomes to the point where you can't predict it, you don't see the wall. It just comes crashing down. And that's what just happened right there. I mean, sure, I probably could have squeezed it out, but I didn't want to have my back arching too much and I don't want to have <clears throat> my form to compromise too much. Okay. Okay, that's it for that. I'm not going to bore you guys with another set of single rows. So now I'm just going to do the boxing. So this is basically, you call it what you want, uh, Tybo, P9, whatever, P90X. I don't think they do this, but maybe they did. But See, these are 14-ounce gloves. You're like, what's the point of putting gloves on? Couldn't you just do it with hands? Yeah, but I like putting the gloves on for two reasons. Number one, it motivates me because it feels like I'm actually doing it. Number two, 14 ounces is just about one pound. So I'm actually getting some added resistance by doing this. Uh, so anyway, let's do it. So one of the ways to, like to just stay on the feet. So if I'm not punching, I'm jogging in place. Or I'm keeping my feet moving and I keep my hands up. So first I'm going to start off with just some rights. Just single. And once I'm punching, I don't have to move my feet anymore. This is going to get sophisticated in a second because I want to kind of burn the calories. So. I mean, I want to teach, but at the same time, I want to kind of freely work out and get a good calorie burn. So we're going to go one, two. Left, left, right. Staying on the feet, and we'll switch sides. I'm not going to do this that long. Probably five minutes, ten. Things will start spicing up once I get the juices, the creative juices going. Keeping the hands up burns more calories because it makes your shoulders have to, the muscles in your shoulders are working. Down here, you're not really working as much, you know? Up here, you're burning calories. Now, I'm not a boxing coach, but I did get trained by a friend of mine who did get coaching and he told me keeping the hands up is for defense. Yes, but I'm not a boxing coach. I'm a trainer, so I see it this way. Keeping the hands up makes you burn more calories. That's the way I see it. So, it's just a one two with, a, with an uppercut scoop. There's a lot of core involved here. Okay. Okay. Let's do a little low high followed by a right. So what I'm doing is I'm vi I'm envisioning like I'm fighting. Just kind of going third person with it. What I mean by that is I'm trying to consciously take my mind, try not to think about it. I'm just throwing punches that feel right. changing the platform too, punching from different angles, different positions, constantly moving. Okay. 
I'm throwing a couple of bobbing weaves in there because I want to pretend like I'm not just punching at air, but you got to be defending and do, do, ducking and dodging and moving. And you don't have to know what you're doing, quite frankly. I'm just doing what comes natural and instinctual. So I'm just doing what I need to do to burn the calories. So hey, we're going to do this a little bit longer. I've actually got videos on YouTube of me doing this, by the way. And I did this when I was competing in bodybuilding, believe it or not. You start to, you have to get creative with how many ways you can burn, burn calories from mental motivation. You get tired of doing the same thing, you know, doing the bike or running or walking, you know, you want to change it up. This is one of those ways to change it up, something totally different. And it's low impact, low impact. Switch sides. Okay. I think I'm done with the boxing. Might be done with the workout, actually. I kind of want to keep going. But Let's see. I did the 80 push ups. I did all those rows. 23 minutes. Okay, let's see. Let's do some uh, dead bugs. That's what I'll do dead bugs. So I'm putting pressure. I'm actually trying to move my hand back, but I'm holding it. Tense is the core. And I'm doing dead bug crunch. Okay, switch size, eight. Five, six, seven. Um, some things to know is when you do that, I'm gonna do a plank while I'm talking. When you do that, you don't have to actually do the crunch. Because some people, it causes too much strain in the neck. So actually, you can just literally leave your head flat on the ground while you do that. I'm going to throw in a little side saw here. All right, let's come back. I'm just going to keep my head down this time. Switch it up. Plank. But it's not going to just be a plank. I want to do something. I want it to be a moving plank. So I'm going to go two. A little around the world. Three. Stir the pot. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna do one more set of each, and then I'm gonna do some bird dogs for the lower back. Eight, switch it up. Okay, one more plank. with a little plank jaw brace. Okay, that's it. I'm just gonna cool down now. I think I'm just gonna stretch and cool down. And uh, that's it, so 26 minute workout. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I plan to do these every week. Um, I don't have a schedule, but I am definitely want to do it every week because, number one, um, I know it may not be the best content. I understand that, but hey, I'm doing the best I can. 
It may be the greatest content for some, for others it may not be. That's totally fine, people come and go. But for those who, I mean, even if you take something small out of it, that's great. Others may just be getting ideas. That's fantastic, that's the whole point of this. But I'm also getting a great workout doing it. I don't think I'd be pushing this hard if I was just doing it by myself. Um, I think, and even if just one person watching, even if there's nobody watching, just having this thing on and knowing that someone could be watching, accountability. Um, now granted, not all my workouts are that way. I work out by myself a lot, but um, it kind of makes me feel like I'm still at the gym because even though I'm not working out with somebody, you're working out with them. They're there with you and they're working out for their own goals. I'm working out for mine, but we're like in the same room, you know? We're kind of working towards a common goal. And I think that kind of has a unifying effect, so that's why I'm doing this, mainly. So anyway, hopefully it's helpful. Um, I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> I'm getting good workouts out of it, so. Thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, hopefully, um, and you don't have to train crazy hard. I mean, um, some days when I don't push hard, I, I need to get myself out there and start walking more. Um, I have been riding, but you know, I should probably change it up. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, take care.